Hi there, it's Jason with Florida Solar Design Group, and today we are nerding out with some data. I had a client this week that told me a competitor said that we're not all that smart. We, we just use AI for everything we do. And uh, I got a bit of a laugh out of it because it reminded me of about a decade ago, my ex-brother-in-law told my nieces that Uncle Jason isn't really that smart. Everything that he knows, he learned from the internet. And I, I uh, tell that story all the time. I think it's hilarious that he thought that uh, it mattered where I got my knowledge. But um, anyway, I have it and I'm happy to share it. So today we're going to look at Solar Assistant and ChatGPT and go over a situation that I had to solve for a client and how we did that. So let's jump into it. Okay, here we are on the Solar Assistant dashboard. Uh, we're looking at a client site down in Naples. This is a completely off-grid client. And the problem that they were having is they had frequent generator runtime and they were trying to reduce that. And we needed to figure out how to improve the system to do that. Uh, do we need more solar power, more, more batteries? You know, what's the, the problem? Um, ultimately, the, the load in the house is very high when it's occupied and it's manageable when it's not occupied, but the generator was still running when the house was unoccupied and that was bothering the client. So we needed to figure out how do we deal with the times when the house is not occupied and how do we create enough solar power and store it in batteries and then discharge it at night and be able to get enough solar power the next day to recharge the batteries. So the question became, is this a solar problem or is this a battery problem? And we're gonna show you how we figured that out and what we did to solve it. Okay, so let's jump into the charts here. Right now we're looking at this month so far. The blue line is the load in the house, the electrical usage. The yellow is the PV power, solar produced. And the red is the generator running. So you can see when the house is heavily occupied here, um, the load power is high and the generator is running frequently. That's to be expected. Um, the system really was never designed for a, a heavy load use case. This is a off-grid home. It's a beach house. It's not occupied very often, but uh, when it is occupied, it's going to have some generator runtime. So that's understandable. The big problem is back here, July 1st and July 2nd, you know, the generator ran here in the morning and that's what we're trying to avoid. It also happened here, um, right here on July 5th and 6th, the evening of the 5th, morning of the 6th, the generator ran again, and, and that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. So let's focus in on July 1st and 2nd here. I'm going to zoom into this area. Now, the problem area is right here. It's the overnight period where the load exceeds the solar power, and this is the area that we have to cover with battery power. Pretty simple. So I'm gonna zoom right into it. Okay, so let's download this data. ChatGPT lets us grab this data for different time increments. Right now we're looking at 30 second increment data. We're gonna grab the load power, the grid power, and the PV power, download it, jump into ChatGPT, upload it to ChatGPT, and I'm going to ask it to analyze this data, subtract PV power from load power, give me total KWH, kilowatt hours. It's going to do its thing. And it tells us that in this overnight period that the difference was 40.53 kilowatt hours. So I'm gonna ask it to give me a graph here. Let's see what it comes back with. This will help us visualize it a little bit better. Okay, so there it is. Overnight, uh, as soon as the load exceeded the PV power, 
you start to consume battery capacity. And at the end, we have 40, a little over 40 kilowatt hours. So the question is, why did the generator start? We have this generator runtime here. And the problem is this battery is 60 kilowatt hours and has 40 kilowatt hours of usable, um, usable capacity because we run it down to about 20%. So we've got 48 kilowatt hours to work with. The problem is the day before, July 1st, solar never really charged the batteries to 100%. So we started here at around 4.55 p.m. with the batteries not at 100%. And that's why the generator started the next morning. So obviously more PV power is going to help with that. But most importantly, more PV power here in the afternoon. During this period, uh, the, that's very early in the day. 4.55 roughly. Uh, at that point, we were already consuming power from the batteries. And it would be nice to have some solar power to offset that. Okay, let's go back to our month to date. And we're going to do the same thing for this July 5th to July 6th period. So let me zoom in on this. Now we can see here that on July 6th, it was a very kind of a bad solar day, especially in the morning, bad solar morning. So we're going to grab this from here to here. Again, this is a period where the battery was required to cover the load. We're going to download it. Change the settings here. Okay, so we've got that data. We'll jump back into chat GPT. And I'm going to say do the same thing for this data. Upload that file. Now we could have done a lot of this in Excel. Um, we could have taken the data and done it manually, but man, this is, this is way faster. So we look at this data set and here we go. You know, in the morning on the 6th, the sun started to come out and it actually charged the batteries a little bit and then um, the sun went behind the clouds again and, and it kept climbing. So here again, we're at about 40 kilowatt hours of, of battery capacity that was needed. So the battery that we have is, is actually big enough to cover the overnight load in a, a typical unoccupied situation for the house. Uh, now, when the house is occupied, the generator is going to run, as we said, but we're really trying to avoid this situation where the, the load at night is actually very manageable, but that generator is starting up in the morning. And, and same thing happened right here uh, on the 5th and 6th. Now, on the 9th, we added some solar panels, and, and that's why you see the, the solar total solar power uh, maximum jump up quite a bit. And let's take a look at what happened overnight the first full day and night. So you can see during this period here, the solar power is mirroring the load. And that's because at roughly noon on the 10th of July, solar power had charged the batteries to 100%. So through this entire afternoon period, the solar power was carrying the entire load with the battery sitting at 100%. Now at 4.53 roughly, the sun went behind clouds. It actually probably rained here. The solar power went down to essentially nothing. And the rain passed and then solar power picked up again. And this is where adding those solar power so solar panels really helped. And, and I'll get into that in a second here. But uh, solar actually was covering the load here for a couple minutes in the afternoon and then of course, the sun goes down and we have to carry the loads through the night. So let's look at this period. 
from here to, let's go to right here, because that's where the solar power started picking up the load. So this is our nighttime period, and we're going to download this data. Jump back into chat GPT. Upload that file. And let's just say, do it again. Let AI work its magic. And here you go. So overnight, we only had to cover about 27 kilowatt hours, 28 maybe kilowatt hours overnight. And, and that's less than those other nights. But why is that? That's because we shortened the window. We really reduced the time that the battery had to carry the load. By adding panels, we got some performance in the late afternoon hours, and then in the morning, solar came up to speed a lot quicker. Let's look at the next night just to confirm this. Okay, we're talking about this period here. Now we didn't get this big bump in the afternoon of solar power. It must've been really cloudy this day. But on the 11th, again, you see the battery was at 100% through most of the afternoon until about four o'clock. And the battery had to carry the load until about 8 a.m. the next morning. So let's download this data. Back into chat GPT. Do it again. Okay, on this night, because we didn't get that bump in the afternoon with the solar power, we actually had to cover about 36, 37 kilowatt hours overnight, which is well within our 48 kilowatt hour capacity, usable capacity for the battery. And that means the generator didn't have to start because the batteries started at 100%. So this entire load overnight, even though it started out really high above seven kilowatts on the late afternoon and remained pretty high until uh, let's see, 6 p.m. it started coming down. Then we got around the baseline around, uh, what is that, nine o'clock at night. And overnight, you know, we're drawing an average of roughly two kilowatt hours through the overnight period. And then in the morning, you know, coffee maker turns on, things start coming on in the house, air conditioning. But the solar power ramping up quickly in the morning is what saved the day. So you can see on these first four full days of having the new solar panels, the generator hasn't had to start. So yes, we used AI, and what we did is identify the problem first, the generator starting early in the morning, and we had to figure out how do you solve for that. The way that we solved for it is let's produce solar power early in the morning so that we can stop that generator from running, but we also wanna make sure that we have solar power in the afternoon so that we can get the batteries to 100% and keep it at 100% as late as possible in the day that reduces the window over which the batteries need to cover the load. And that's really key in off-grid solar, something that most people don't understand. It's not just about generating the most solar power overall with a nice south-facing array. Sometimes having east-facing and west-facing solar panels is critical. Let's jump back into ChatGPT and see what else we can do. Okay, let's compare all those data sets. Okay, so this is interesting. The first data set was that day that the batteries had to cover about 41, 42 kilowatt hours. Same thing in that second data set. Uh, these are before we installed the solar. Now you look at these two other data sets and we had to cover a lot less energy overnight. And that's a big deal. So, yep, we use AI, we use it daily, we use it proudly, and we use it effectively. 
This is a perfect use case scenario where we added panels to the east and west roof of a home to improve the off-grid performance and reduce generator runtime.